Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, so we are coming from Belgium. It's almost a joke because the country is so small, it's, uh, we have less inhabitants than in all Paris. Nevertheless, in our country, since five years, passive house is the law, it's not the choice. Uh, so we all have to deal with that. So we're going to show you um, how do we deal with these kind of things and how to go beyond zero energy buildings and so on. And one of the uh, use <coughs> tools we're going to use is light, of course, and how we reverse everything. Because we're architect, basically. Um, so our building, we are doing building not only in, in Europe and in Brussels, but also south of, uh, of Europe. We opened an office in New York two, three years ago. We work in uh, Canada also, and uh, north of, uh, of Africa. So we have three offices now, New York, Brussels, and Lisbon. Um, we start on a very small scale, so you can see the scale of the, the small dots is the scale of the buildings. So now we are working not only on buildings level, but on small districts, city blocks. And here you see how many liters of coffee we drink per project. And I feel the peak is there. It's not the district project. It's our very, very first passive house project we did in 2003. Since 12 years now, uh, we do only but passive house or zero energy buildings. We never have done any other buildings. But we go beyond, of course. Uh, oh, sorry, I was not supposed to show that. Because we were in Seattle and... That was, that was the idea, is to go beyond energy and so on, this 50 shades of green, because sometimes things uh, that engineers forget, we are partly engineers in our practice because we have in-source everything, is, of course, we don't live in an Excel file, we don't live in, we don't live in, in data bases, we, we live also in buildings, so it has to be a bit of sexy. Nevertheless, we <laughs> use tools, these kind of tools, not the sassy tools, Americans will understand. So all these tools we use, one of them is called Velux Delight, of course, but all of them, including parametric design and all these building physics and so on, we stole them from engineers to play as architect, just to refuel or refeed new narratives for architecture to make it fun. And at the end of the day, to have buildings that has no impact on environment. That's the idea. Um, again, that's a competition. We are doing a lot of competition, facing massive, uh, iconic architects like Jean Nouvel, OMN, and so on. Sometimes we win, not that much, but... Um, we did also the very first embassy, uh, it's Belgian embassy in Kinshasa. It's the very first passive house building. And um, believe me, if you can do a passive house building, it means very low tech, no high tech in Kinshasa. Everywhere else in the world, it's easy, piece of cake. Among, on, on top of that also, uh, in our country, as we said, it's mandatory. Passive house is the law, we have no choice. It's also because since a long time ago, we considered that you don't have to pay an extra to have a close to zero energy building. And why would you have to pay more for that? And why would you have to have feedback in 10 years, five years? Forget it. It has to be sexy, zero extra cost. This building, it was a European call for tender, RFP. Uh, we did it with uh, local builders and so on. It cost. 50% of the highest or the offer, and it's a close to zero energy building. So it's possible. We didn't say that before. It's only recently we, we could say that. So we are, uh, for the moment, you see here in New York and, and so on. So the, the idea is to see how we can use all these softwares that uh, Sebastian showed you, that we, we use everything in-house in our office, and is to see how we can use that to feed our architecture and not only to have uh, energy consumption. So now we are able, with all these tools, to really um, design our buildings in terms of flows, using all the parameters that seem important to us, like uh, air flows, natural light, energy, uh, and, and so on. Sorry. And we, we also use parametric de design that allows us to really run a lot of energy simulations and to make hundreds of variants in a very short time. So, for example, here is a project we... Uh, it's a contest we won a few weeks ago. It's an office, office building in Luxembourg. You know that uh, for office buildings, one of the most issues is overheating. So what we did is that we analyzed the solar radiation on each facade of, uh, of the building. I, uh, I'm seeing the... Can you click the mouse on if the, on you the can image? Click, yes, on the image, because there is a small GIF. It's a GIF. It should be animated. 
So normally you can see that, uh, yes, we, we created some algorithm that uh, changing various parameters, like for example, depending on the distance between elements and the depth in the facade, we could really uh, achieve the best ratio between radiation on the facade and l uh, natural light views and uh, shade control to avoid overheating. So here you can see the solar radiation on the facade, and then it really defines our architecture. So at the end, the result was that the distance between elements is depending really on this solar radiation, and you can see that it, the grid gets thinner in the most exposed facade and wider in the less exposed facade, depending also on the floors, because, of course, there is more radiation on the upper floors. And after that, of course, we can also play with this grid, and most of the elements will be with uh, transparent windows, but we can also put some opaque uh, elements to, to create uh, a dynamic in the facade and depending on the needs of natural light inside the building. So that's another competition we just won. Uh, it's for a German uh, developer. They, they want to put a, a building on the market. And the funny thing is, when you are in a market like in Brussels, we have European Commission, where everybody's doing passive house without even knowing it, which is fantastic, otherwise you have extra cost. So that, that's the code. When you put, everyone puts the same beautiful building, what do you give more? So it's, it's, everything is reversing now. We have from real estate developers, they come and they say, can we do, what can we do next? So here we propose, it's a, look like a normal building. Of course, it's, a, it's an office building. The idea was to put um, completely net zero energy, not only zero energy on the building use, but also the plug loads. It means all the tenants who come there, you pay nothing anymore. Mm -hmm. And why would you pay to, to work in a building? So it's not yet self-sufficient, autonom. That's going to be a next step. And it's also completely CO2 neutral. CO2 neutral is the new target, because when you have close to zero energy, our go new government, that there since a few months, they decide we're going to be CO2 neutral by 2050. Uh, so again, we play with those, all these algorithms that we stole from here and there. We put in the, one of these uh, grasshopper stuff. And yeah, if you, normally you're going to see it alive, not all the formulas, of course. That was done in a week time during the competition time, of course. And the funny thing is, the developer, they didn't ask especially, we want a zero, we want whatever. They didn't ask, they just want something cute, sexy. At the same cost, then business as usual, and again, why pay more? So we propose them for the same cost you have foreseen, it's going to be zero. So we have to play beyond just energy savings and so on, passive strategies and so on. One of the tricks we use here, it's for the daylight autonomy. We wanted to increase 5 to 10% the daylight autonomy. You have also the glare and so on. So we ask to the, to the model to show us a few hundreds of uh, simulation with these blinds when they are 5, 10, 15 degrees, whatever, and to give us the result of the inside. Because we are north oriented because of the city block, so it's very bad uh, orientation. And um, based on the best cases, who was also looking sexy because we are architect, don't forget it. So we took one of them and we could show, look, if you do already what's in the low, passive house, you're going to have that. And if you go with this solution, you have almost not use of this uh, artificial lighting during office time. So, and of course, all these tools were used, even <laughs> the Velux Delight. The funny thing, we are architects. We are a bit more than 30 architects, but it's among oh, some of architects, some are using CO2 calculation, assessment, or lightings, design, whatever, just to have that at the end. So everything is done in-house. Again, this kind of how to shape, we have another project in Lisbon where we played with this um, algorithm. How can we... Um, fine-tune and to go beyond close to a zero energy or and after a CO2 neutral. So that helps a lot. Just to produce this, it's another competition uh, that we just had uh, in, in summer. And the one on the right, it's in, uh, it's in uh, Vancouver. Since we have an office in New York, um, we arrived there by accident. We didn't choose New York. Could have been Moscow, Shanghai, whatever, I don't know. It is actually the mayor, de Blasio, and Robertson on the, on the west coast. They both wanted to have uh, the greenest city in the world and in the universe. So when they passed by a few years ago in Europe, they passed by Brussels and they said, oh my God, you have a law where 
passive house is the law. How, how could you get there and how real estate react and how is it even possible and so on? And did you say you can do it at the same cost? They said, okay, come to our place. We want to see that. So we, we start, this is how we start in New York and in Vancouver by working for the both municipalities. And after one year, we said, okay, let's open an office there. So there, for example, for that high rise, it's still in process. We mix few algorithms to be, at the end of the day, zero energy. But it starts with envelope design, what you do as an architect. To deal with uh, climate change and uh, instability of uh, resource availability, it seems quite obvious that uh, we need to conceive and to design and build uh, more resilient buildings. And to do that, we, we really need to uh, focus more on the physical capacities of the architecture and the materials. Uh, and not only on mechanical systems. So we developed uh, a path to taking a few steps to this approach to achieve more resilient buildings. So for us, the first step is, of course, passive house. Passive house, uh, not only for the standard, but really uh, for the bioclimatic uh, approach of uh, architecture. And it's uh, the way to, first of all, we need to reduce the demand uh, like um, working on the envelope of the building. Then, when you have uh, reduced the demand, you can compensate with uh, renewable energies and uh, achieve the zero energy. And after that, if you can go one step further, <laughs> it's to integrate also embodied energy and to go to a carbon neutral building to compensate all the embodied energy and also the consumptions and even other, other impacts if it's possible. Another step is to get autonomous. Of course, it doesn't make sense in all, the, all contexts. It depends on if there is some infrastructure, if you are in a city or if it's an independent building. But in some cases, it can be also inter interesting. And the next step, the final step for us is really to see how we can take into account all the impacts in sustainability. So not only energy consumption, not only uh, life cycle assessment, but also comfort, natural light, biodiversity, water, and everything. And the idea is not only to compensate these impacts, but even to see if it's possible to have a positive impact to regenerate the environment. We call this approach PermaCity, with reference to uh, the principles of permaculture. It really makes sense at a urban scale, because you can really have like, uh, some waste who become a resource. Each element can contribute to a, um, a, a sustainable ecosystem. So we try, in all of our projects, we try to go as far as we can in these steps. Of course, it depends on the context, on the scale of the project, mm -hmm. on the budget, but we always go as far as we can. Okay, and we're going to end with this because that was really the question. Reduce the impact, it's possible, but as, Al as Aline said, we did a competition and it starts two years ago in Paris. We did a, one of the reInvent competition. In the meantime, we have four projects like that. It's not only limit the impact, but can you regenerate the environment? Can you go that far? So if you ask, of course, it's, it means that we can do it. One of them, it's a study we are doing now for New York, it's uh, Governor's Island, everyone is working there. Uh, we have two running in Luxembourg, they're really running now. And the most complicated case we have today, because it's also how to be self-sufficient and so on, it's included everything, included in water, and we are doing a, a huge project now in Arizona, nearby Phoenix, so that's very tough, but that's the idea, to be completely self-sufficient. Uh, it starts with this huge competition we did here in Paris where we put some rules just for the fun. What if you do a development where for a uh, half million square feet, uh, meter square, every single apartment could have minimum one hour of direct lighting any moment of the year? Stupid rules, but just why not? So, of course, it shapes the completely district just to produce this at the end. And I'm going to finish with the with the conclusion. At the end of the project, of course, uh, we were the two last uh, uh, in the competition. It's, we calculated if you do a business as usual compared to this project, and when you compensate, you have a benefit to the environment. And if it would have been done, this project would have catch as much CO2 as a, a forest of 600 hectares. That means nothing. So we compare, what does it mean? And we discovered that if you take all the green area of Paris, all the square, parks and so on, they have all 
550. It means this project is going to catch much more CO2 than all the green area of the big Paris. It's like if you bring exactly this to Paris. And I'm going to end with the movie, if you can click. Wow, it's right. We are in France, so we put uh, Françoise Brut. Eh? So here we see that was the competition entry at the end, of course. The thing is, we are facing huge architects group, so we are only 30, but there were groups like 300, 400 architects, but they had no chance, of course. <laughs> Who does that anyway? But the funny thing again here, everything was reversed because it is also in the demand of the developers. So we propose, why shouldn't we go to regenerate the environment, even in Paris and so on? So these buildings are going to act like forest. They have catalyzers, so they really eat the NOx and they transform it and so on. So then you have to use all the tips and tricks, including the lighting design. Et voilà. Voilà, thank you. Thank you.